<clears throat> it says we're live. Emerson, are you alive over there? <laughs> I'm alive, Jim. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Welcome There's to the no show. rumor, at least. <laughs> Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're so glad that you're here. Emerson Brantley is our director of marketing. He's a personal friend of ours, great friend of ours. We've known each other for several years, many years, as a matter of fact, five, six, seven, something like that. I don't know. We we quit. We You know, it's just a number. We don't count numbers. But Emerson, it's so good to have you here. And next week, you're going to be on, you know, hear people saying they're going to be on the road. Emerson's going to be on the rails. <laughs> I am. Yeah. He's got his I own am. personal box car there. He like box car Willie. He's he, now you taking a little trip on Amtrak, aren't you? I am. Good I for am. you. Good for you, brother. Yeah, man. I'm. 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 Uh, I'm. Uh, it, and I've done it. In, I've done it before uh, in mm -hmm. the past, but this is the first time that I've that I've uh, done it this close to home. So it's interesting. Oh, it's yeah. interesting. After after my um, uh, TBI. after my uh, uh, traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm really have to be cautious. They didn't take away my license. They probably should have, but I have to just <laughs> be really aware mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, uh, of, of not, not endangering people around me. So I don't, mm -hmm. I generally don't get out on highways. Right. Right. I you understand. Know, I'll drive to my doctor or to the gym or something like that. So this is uh, just a few hours away mm -hmm. to, go, to go to Orlando and mm -hmm. a, a a uh, a um, prospective client has uh, offered to pay my way to an event and mm. the hotel and all, and so I'm taking the train. Yeah, how about yeah. that? You know, you got your little st stick and your little knapsack back there, and all got everything packed in there. That's well, your goodie no, bag. No, you got I, your I, got, I got a rolling one actually. Uh, you, you know, I'm mm -hmm. advanced enough to yeah. have that. But you you get you sit in a nice seat. You have a table. You can plug in your computer or laptop if you need to. You can sit mm -hmm. there and work. You have Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it, I've got three hours that I would be driving when I can mm. actually be relaxing, you know, productive, and, yeah, and, and relax and get up and walk around. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, so and Emerson, I, you, you got to give us a shout out on Facebook. This is Emerson on the rails. You know, and say hello to us, brother. We we'd love to see that. We really my best boxcar, Willie. There you go. Hey, before we uh, came on the air, we were in a studio there, and I got to tell you a little fun thing. I was talking about well, Emerson. I got to get my microphone plugged up here, and I got to, you know, see if I can sound better and all those good things. I can't do much about my looks. And that keyed him up, and he started singing. <laughs> Matt, was it Mac Davis's song, Oh, Lord, It's Hard to Be Humble? <laughs> I don't remember who sang it, actually. Yeah, I think yeah. it was Mac Davis, yeah. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble. When you're perfect in every way, I can't wait to look in the mirror because I get better looking each day. You know, everybody ought to sing that when you get up out of bed in the morning, you know? There you go. Be the yeah. first person Be the first person in your day to give you a compliment. Yeah. Or, you that's know, if you a, want. That's a, that's a good thing. We ought to write that down, Jim. That's a, that's a good way to live. It sure is. It You're sure the first is. First person in your day to give yourself a compliment. Yeah. And Emerson, yesterday, this this young lady that called me, uh, Nicole, she does not know that we're going to do this. She didn't know I was going to do it yesterday. I and I got to tell you something, folks. Yesterday, at just a impromptu type of thing, I has decided. Boom. When I say I just decided, the energy from above, from the senior in the sky, <laughs> sent You're me a sub. Saying, follow yeah. the energy. Yeah. Who sent me a sub a subliminal <clears throat> message? Hey, moron! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need to talk about this. But it just so happened that, uh, but what I did yesterday really blessed Denise over at Tough Mother, and I thought I'd do it again. You might want to explain Tough Mother to him. Oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> That's but, the brand. Uh, it's the brand, yeah. Tough Mother, and Emerson. I do think that we have the uh, website up there. Let's see here. Yeah, there it is. There it Tough is. Mother Products website, toughmotherbrand.com. That's it right there. I'm going to read the or uh, share with you the ingredients here. Uh, let me well, get on well, my. Just at, at their core, they're mm -hmm. extremely, extremely, extremely high quality. Oh, yeah. Vinegar based. Mm. And there's all sorts of medical oh. uh, research that's been done. Amen. On the value of vinegar. 
mm. in your just a, just a teaspoon or so a day in your diet and mm -hmm. all of the things that it does and helps you with your with your gut bacteria and all this other uh, oh, research yeah. that's taken place but they are oh, yeah. super super high quality yeah. in what they produce they and certainly are very limited right. production in what they produce to maintain mm -hmm. the quality. I'll let you go oh. ahead and read it. Oh, okay. These are the ingredients. Now, uh, where I was coming from and, and the way I tripped across this was through our daughter, Lisa. She met the folks over in Chapel Hill when they were over there at a scarecrow, one of these fall festival events that we have in towns, little towns. And she tripped across it. And last year she bought some and she really liked it. And then she came up and told her mom and me about it because she knew I was into apple cider vinegar and looking for other things other than the normal medications because the medications that I was, that I was prescribed, let me say that, after my heart attack and open heart surgery and four bypasses, I did not like what I was reading about the side effects. So I'm thinking, well, let me do something to help enhance my body. <laughs> and this product here, Lisa, our daughter, told us about it. And we ordered, and you can see that I'm definitely partaking of the festivities here. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, this stuff has, or it's everything is organic. They're very particular about their formula. And that's what I like about small right. businesses. They're in it for the, you know, the content and the quality of who they are and what they're about. This is uh, <clears throat> apple cider vinegar, organic honey, organic uh, oranges, organic onions, Organic garlic, organic ginger, organic horseradish, organic turmeric, organic jalapeno, organic habanero. Uh, how do you say that? Habe habanero. Habanero. Thank you. Sometimes I just can't get some of those words right off the old tongue. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Have but, another uh, sip of vinegar. Sure. There you go. There you go. And uh, <clears throat> that's got That's of course uh, chilies. And of course the. Uh, organic black peppercorn. And the thing that I really notice about this, because a lot of times when you take something, you don't really know, is it doing something for me or not? The first thing I notice about that formula there, I take a tablespoon of it in the morning after I get up and I put it in my, over some ice and some water and I drink it. But what's amazing is that it breaks loose all of the phlegm and stuff. And I mean, it starts bringing it up, which is a good thing. And Emerson, I tell you right now, I just can't say enough about the, the product there. And ladies and gentlemen, we are not paid for that. Uh, in, in, she has not bought any endorsement or anything like that. She had never heard of us till yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> but, but call uh, them up anyway. Tell them how happy you were to hear about them on this take show. A, take a look at their website yeah. and look at the ingredients because the ingredients are top notch. And I'll guarantee you. You will be pleasantly surprised. It's kind of nice to find everything that you want in one container like that. Well, it has and a lot nice. of health benefits. You know, oh, the yeah. The fermentation process, mm -hmm. they, they're just discovering more and more things every day of the value oh, yeah. that it has and mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 uh, in balance. There's all sorts of connections to balancing your blood sugar and A1C mm -hmm. for diabetics. Mm -hmm. For the work that it does with your gut bacteria, which is oh, yeah. they're finding now your gut bacteria is directly related and connected internally to the production of your different brain fluids and mm -hmm. chemicals that clarify your thinking and reasoning. Uh, it can affect heart, mm. uh, uh, cholesterol levels. There's all sorts of different research studies. And there's lots of research studies, you know, out there, but there are an awful lot of double blind studies that show yes. the fermentation process that we're talking about here. And it doesn't mm -hmm. take a lot, does it, Jim? Just no, takes it, it just, does not. Yeah. A and uh, mm -hmm. tablespoon, something like that a day, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about it is that this, what we're talking about here at this product of mother, this leads us right into what we're going to be talking about when we talk about life after a heart attack and lifestyle mm -hmm. changes. And, you know, like uh, Larry King, uh, he died last year at 87, I think it was. But back in 1987, he had a heart attack. That's over, you know, that's what, 30 something years ago. And, uh, you know, so therefore, if you have a heart attack, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be, you're going to 
be shaking hands with the undertaker, okay? I mean, a lot of people fear that and, and don't live in fear. But today, my goodness gracious, we got some things that we want to give a little shout out about, don't we? We do, man. We yeah. have some interesting things going on. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I like to play is Sudoku. <laughs> I do. I like that numbers game. You know, I really do. And I well, play that, that Wordle. That's, and... one I can't, that's one that I can't enjoy with you there, Jim. Is that right? Mm -hmm. But I well, really apart enjoy from it. Sudoku is a single game. <laughs> A <laughs> single player game. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I just there is, never had patience for puzzles and things like yeah, that. And it's not yeah. that I don't. And I, I'm pretty I'm good at them. Of, it's just I never, yeah. never had the patience for them. I'm kind of the same way to some degree, but you know, doing something like Wordle or the Quirtle, which is four of them. Uh, me and my wife, we do those early in the morning, and you I'll do so, sharp. Oh yeah. Well, let's it's hope it sharp, does. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know. Got to consider what it's got to work with, you know. <laughs> but today is also a day we want to give a shout out to the emergency service. Oh, people. yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, I've talked a lot about these folks when I was in the hospital. I mean, I've I said after I was in the hospital, I just wish that when I got rolled in there for surgery, I didn't see anybody. I knew that the, the surgical nurse, you know, she helped roll me in and she talked to me on the way in. And very nice lady. But my point being, I just heard the voice of the um, anesthesiologist says, I'm going to put this over your mouth, just breathe normal. And that was it. Next thing I knew, I was back in ICU. But, you know, Emerson, I've said before, you know, the the people who took care of me and my hour of need through that entire process from Friday night to on up till I had the surgery on uh, Monday. Most of them I got a chance to think, but the ones in the operating room, I didn't. And, you know, you think about all the people that administered to you in your hour of need. And you're in orbit mentally around Jupiter somewhere <laughs> and they're taking care of you doing their specialty because that's who they are. That's their love. That's their passion in life to help others. And uh, I don't have around behind the butterflies. Yeah, I don't have that gift. You know, one thing I've often said with my warped sense of humor the person who was running the heart and lung machine that because there's two tubes, one's that brings the oil, uh, the oil, the, oh, the blood out of the heart there. I was talking to my cardiologist joking with him about a car. I hadn't dropped a valve or blown a head gasket, but anyway, it pulls the oil uh, the blood out of the bottom of the heart and pumps it through the machine, spins it, which creates the oxygen and it pumps back into the, another portion of the heart above it. And that keeps your, you know, keeps you alive with proper blood and oxygen. And I just like to thank that individual and just simply say, hey, <laughs> with my warped sense of humor, I'm glad and I'm very, very thankful that when I checked out of here, I wasn't any dumber than I was when I first checked in. <laughs> I tell you, but EMT personnel, Emerson, you've had you've had great uh, treatment there and great response and people oh, yeah. administer you in your hour, especially with your TBI, brother. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, my traumatic brain injury didn't, uh, you know, I was totally mm -hmm. unresponsive and they, they came in oh, and yeah. whisked me away and mm -hmm. had me in ICU for six weeks. Yeah. And you didn't um, even know you were on planet Earth, did you? No, I was. But, you know, it's so interesting how the brain works. And I've had mm. a number of years working with clients in uh, in the uh, in the brain research space, as well as in the uh, um, uh, uh DNA space, right? But it's been re really, which is interesting because across my career, medical stuff has probably been five to ten percent of what I've done in marketing. But oh yeah, but, uh, I knew enough to know that the brain has an amazing capacity to rewire itself. It's they call it brain elasticity, hmm. and a lot of the things that they thought they knew about brain and aging, mm -hmm. they're finding, you know. It doesn't have to always be that way. Mm -hmm. and, and just the stuff that you were just talking about. Oh, the yeah. Vinegar. vinegar affects a lot mm. of different systems in your body. Oh, and, yeah. And vinegar isn't the magic part of it. It's the fact that it's been fermented. And mm. so it's alive. Mm. Now, you know, if you get, you know, plain old off the shelf apple vinegar, probably it's not. But, mm -hmm. but uh, it's an old it's an old it's an old thing that they refer to. That the vinegar yeah. has mother in it. Oh so, yeah. So being 
being a bad mother, uh, or tough being a mother, tough mother, <laughs> tough mother, you know, yeah. it has and there's a lot of little different meanings here. Yeah. Because when the vinegar is alive, that vinegar is doing things within your body, and your body mm -hmm. has receptors and are and is made for that. Mm -hmm interaction to take place and it, it affects yeah. so many different systems in your body it really truly does and please go to toughmotherbrand.com and check them out oh, yeah. and uh if you uh order something or if you call them or whatever just let them know that you heard from it here on the show we like i say we're not paid for that endorsement or anything like that this is a oh but let them know for goodness sake Oh yeah, they won't charge you any more than twenty percent if, if you do. They, <laughs> they, you know what? Everybody, everybody who has a quality product deserves yes to have yes. people let them know yes that they've heard about them and how they mm -hmm. how you heard about them yes so, that, so because they're and, and I'm talking about every small business oh you're yeah. trying to do a quality program and quality product and that matters to you mm -hmm. you may not be marketing experts you may not be people with millions of dollars to to promote stuff. And you're up against the the big box stores and the and the big oh, uh, yeah. uh, the big conglomerates and everything mm -hmm. else, you know, knowing that somebody heard about you mm -hmm. on this show matters mm -hmm. to them because it means to them here's a place where the people who value what we're doing mm -hmm. are listening. Yes, that matters. Because it helps them and it helps us as well at the oh, end of yeah. the day. But I mean, it helps them. Sure. It's a win-win. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share this, Jim. Okay. This is, this, is, this is so true. I've been in marketing pretty much most of my life mm -hmm. as an adult. And <clears throat> I've done tests, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of marketing tests. So I did a test one time where I was... I ran five spots, or, or, or I ran on five different radio stations, all in Central Florida. That's it. I had a different 800 number for each one. So it was real easy to track exactly how many came from this station versus this station. Mm. And because I had an 800 number, I also had time codes. So I knew when people were listening <clears throat> and when they weren't. Hmm. Okay. Now, what I wanted to know was... How, how accurate is it when people, when you ask people, where did you hear about us? And this is, this is stunning. It's stunning. So how many stations did I have, Jim? Five. Five. The responses, when they called in, they were all booked. How did you hear about us? How did you hear about us? How did you hear about us? Even though I had the tracking in place. Right, right. We were given something like, over 20 different radio stations, eight or nine TV stations, 10 or 12 newspapers, another half dozen magazines spread across five Southern states. And don't forget my brother-in-law, he told me. <laughs> yeah, my brother-in-law. So, so people would just say whatever came to the top of their head. Folks, if, if you are talking to a small business, take the moment to, and, and this is in your own community or are a fantastic company like Tough Mother. If you're talking to them, let them know you heard it and mm -hmm. where you heard it, how you found oh, out yeah. about them, mm -hmm. because that helps them know where to put their resources. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And small businesses are the backbone of America. Yeah. Putting their resources where the resources matter mm -hmm. and talking to people that they matter to, that's what it's all about. So give, mm -hmm. give them that little yeah. leg up whenever oh, you yeah. call. And most importantly, the reason why we uh, wanted to promote the uh, Tough Mother products is because I use it and I believe in it. And anything that we endorse on this show, regardless if it's Charlene, Donna, Emerson, myself, Michaela, whoever, we, we use it. We believe in it. We don't we're, we're not for sale, in other words. And uh, it's, it's a great product. It really is. And let's finish up with that. Uh, yeah, let's finish those up. Yeah, let's uh, let's finish up. What what were you going to talk about? The International Day to Protect Education from Attack? Yeah, yeah. This okay. is the day. This is the day that started in 2020, hmm. and I think I, if if memory serves me, they uh, they identified since then 64 countries where education has been co-opted or under attack, and unfortunately, we've seen that in our own country. Oh yeah, and this is not being political. Where instead of letting it be 
something that is open and the kids learn to process information and see different aspects mm -hmm. of it and have different perspectives and points of view. You know, what we're seeing is a lot of ranting and, and, and a lot of people who are going down and wanting to have uh, education controlled and what the teachers can say controlled and having, yeah, you know, historically, I can't help but thinking when I see books being pulled and, and destroyed mm -hmm. of, of times in history and how, yes. and how all of that turned out. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is an important day mm -hmm. for us to value the ability to give conflicting sometimes information, get creative thinking, get reasoning working, and get mm -hmm. our next generation where they actually aren't mm -hmm. sheep, aren't followers, but they actually are thinking. Not oh, necessarily yeah. even agreeing with mom and dad, okay? Because, Jim, I don't know about you, Jim, maybe you did, but I sure didn't agree with my mom and dad, you know, when I was... Well, I did to know. their face, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? Thumb I, therapy hurts. Critical <laughs> thinking. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Thinking. Exactly. Being educated and know that, you know, the truth. Absolutely. And, you know, Emerson also today is a day they recognize for people to stand up to Cancer Day. Oh, oh my yes. gosh. Yes. That ties right into our topics today. Yeah, it does. It sure does. A good friend of ours, Tamara Hunter. Tamara is a cancer survivor. She has chemo buddies for life because okay. she went through chemo treatment. And I've seen her on stage many times. And Tamara walks out on that stage. And she's a very, like I say, a very nice lady. And she looks at the, the audience and she says, <clears throat> I'd like, she says, first of all, she says, have you ever heard these words, these three words? You have cancer. And then bang. You can imagine, Emerson, you being a professional presenter and all, exactly how that's going to hit the audience. And that's exactly what it does. And she says, I'd like for everyone to stand that's had cancer. Of course, a lot of people stand. And she says, I'd like for, you know, the rest of you, those of you that know someone that's, that's had cancer, please stand. And phew, the entire audience is that's on their the feet. the whole audience for you. Yeah. And she is tremendous. Tamara Hunter, good friend of mine. And I've been invited to do her. She's still putting on some type of marathon tour of love. And she's so I got to get back with her on that. And I'm really looking forward to being on TV with her because she's just a uh, princess of a lady. Well, but standing up to cancer. For cancer. So, yeah, yeah. That means a lot to me. Yeah. And, sure and you does. know, uh, wherever I go, whenever I speak, I always have, you know, a pink ribbon on my. Uh, on my yes, lapel. you do. Yes, you, know? you do. And mm -hmm. that's honoring, that's honoring, mm. honoring, not just my, uh, my mother uh, who had breast cancer, but it was honoring mm -hmm. uh, my daughters, my granddaughters. And by mm. the way, guys, men can have it too. There you go. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. that's something to take to the bank, but mm -hmm. there are so many other cancers that don't necessarily get as much attention. Oh yeah. And recognizing that we need to stand up to it. Yes. It's powerful. It's powerful. It really is. And you know, Emerson, uh, today we're going to be focused on, because we started out this week talking about, you know, heart, heart disease and things like that. Number one killer in the United States. And Donna and I, we covered about, you know, the, uh, the warning signs and all that. Donna did a great job on that. And then the second day, she wanted me to talk about the Widowmaker, which I had in my heart that was hereditary. I didn't know I had it. And, you know, the, the problems that you run into there, because it's like I, I tell just about everybody I talk to about it, that realistically, <clears throat> I lived in this dream world that if my blood pressure was good, my cholesterol levels were good, I'm good to go. My heart's got to be good. The problem with that safety net that I thought I had when I had my heart attack on Halloween night last year at midnight, which I find kind of humorous, is that I found out the hard way my safety net had a big hole in it when I fell. And, uh, you know, time I got to the ER that night, my blood pressure was 190 over 111. But my point being is that that's <clears> high <throat> for those yes. of you who don't have blood pressure issues. And yeah. don't know, that's yeah. high. You're getting into some uh, that's areas stroke there. Yeah. yeah, that's what they told me. And uh, but the point of it is, I even asked the doctors, I said, you know, was there a test I could have taken? 
that would have detected that I've got the the widow maker in my heart. That's that's the one that goes it when it, when you have it, it's in the LAD portion, which is the main bottom part of the heart that pumps. And I'll tell you right now, with 90% blockages, it's 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 a serious thing. But I tell people honestly, I am thankful I had a heart attack. I'm thankful I had open heart surgery, and I'm so thankful that I had the four bypasses because it allowed me to remove a life-threatening situation out of my life. And now I can live in peace, comfort, confidence. I can take good products like with Tough Mother there. I can also learn how to enhance my life. In other words, (laughs) stop letting the things that I've been eating eat me and let me turn that around. That's a good way of looking at it. And Emerson, we, you and I both, we've talked a lot about, you know, life and things like that after traumatic injuries, heart attacks and all, Mm -hmm. but life after a heart attack, the very first thing you want to do is embrace and be thankful that for your life, Mm -hmm. that is the starting point. Give thanks that you got heartbeat in your veins and breath in your lungs. Well, and the other thing that helps you appreciate is, and this is for each and every person viewing, Mm -hmm. who has had a life-endangering moment. Everybody whose life you touch and are affected by you, Mm -hmm. starting with your family. Oh, yeah. Your spouse, if you're married, your children, grandchildren, your neighbors, the people that you work with, the people that you touch. Every single one of them has suffered because of it. Oh, yeah. You are alive today. We can give thanks for that. We can be happy. Mm-hmm. Good Lord for the, for the wisdom of the doctors, for the skilled oh. hands that, that took care of us. Yes. But the reality of it is the people that were around you seeing the tubes, seeing the, the, the meters going, the, uh, mm-hmm. the, the monitors going, oh, yeah. and worrying about it day after day, and the prayer chains that went up for you and everything else. Oh, yeah. Every Amen. Every single one of those people mm-hmm. went yeah. through agony Oh yeah, that you didn't I, go uh, through. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you, went, to... you, went through, you went through the suffering that you went through, yeah. but the thing is, the uncertainty yeah. and the not knowing and the and the hanging on the and the worrying and everything yeah. else. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense, you know. Yeah. To to yeah. value the fact that you're alive, not just because you missed a bullet. Yes, sir. But to value the fact that you're alive, so that you can continue to reach out and have impact and touch mm-hmm. the lives of the people around you. Yes. And what value are you adding? Mm. As a result of the extra hours and the days and the months mm-hmm. and the years that you've been Yes. Getting. What are you giving back in return? What are you giving back? Yeah, that's very important because when you find ways of giving, uh, you can't outgive a, the master giver. Let's just, let's just call it the way that's it is. My mother's, my mother's yeah. saying you can't outgive a giver. That's right. Yeah. And, and it, I lowers was, stress. It's, it lowers stress. And stress, oh, yeah. stress itself is a killer. But when you're in a giving posture, mm-hmm. And not in a taking posture. Oh, yeah. When you are uh, adding to and not subtracting from. Mm -hmm. When you're doing things that are enriching other people, it it, it has been, it's proven. It has been, look, when I say proven, it's, it's today they can, they can in, 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 in research and studying and everything else, the things that they're able to know are things that 20 years ago, there was no way to know. Yes. They know, for example, they know, for example, that in in, in your brain activity, that meditating turns on certain centers in your brain and turns off certain other centers. Hmm. Guess what? Praying does the same thing. The same exact centers in your brain. Mm -hmm. And they can see them. These light up and these dim down. Mm -hmm. They know. They know. I mean, this isn't, this isn't, well, they think there may be a connection or, gee, it's better for you to be calm. No, they know. The stress hormones that you build up 
Mm -hmm. in your body Mm -hmm. create more issues Mm -hmm. than the measurable things like yes cholesterol in your blood oh yeah or 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 many of the other Mm -hmm. physical trackers that these stress hormones and the and the brain activity that's going on your brain chemicals all Mm -hmm. of these things are affected when we look outside of ourselves Mm -hmm. and when we're meditating or praying when we're doing things like that that's not all about the the things that we're holding inside Mm -hmm. what happens is all of the bad levels drop and all of the good levels go up Mm. and your health overall is affected Mm -hmm. by it oh yeah single atom in your body is affected by it oh yeah that is so true emerson because earlier in the week, we were talking about different things you can do, foods and all that. But on this last show, on this Friday, as we wrap up this theme week of heart disease, we want to, you know, just share with you that take a deep breath and relax. Give thanks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, when people say to me, uh, that was a horrible thing you went through and all that. No, it wasn't. Uh I didn't have any pain from it or anything like that. I'm not complaining, (laughs) you know, but I mean, uh, I didn't have any pain and I was not. And I know some people that I belong to the group, the cabbage, which is I'd never heard the word cabbage before until that day I was there. And a cardiologist said, you'll need uh, the cabbage procedure. And I'm thinking, I'm a broccoli man myself. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Can I have, I'd rather have some peanut butter and celery if I, if I, if we're going to get there. Yeah. And I asked what it was, it's coronary artery bypass grafting. He was explaining how they take the veins out of the legs and they bypass. And I said, oh, that's great. He looked at me, I said, no, no, what I mean by that. I didn't want him to think that someone shut the oxygen off my brain. Talking about open heart surgery and taking veins and out of your legs and grafting around your heart. Hey, that's great, you know. But I wouldn't have to take any rejection drugs that, right. I, that I was told that I'd take if he put the little mesh steel, uh, stainless steel um, stents in and uh so using my own body parts on you know repurposing them i wouldn't have to take that drug for two years so i was thankful for that at least at least i got one good thing come out of that conversation but when you tell the cardiologist hey that's great he'll look at you a little funny trust me on that one <laughs> the body has an amazing ability to regenerate oh yeah, to heal. yeah it really does and i want to give a shout out to my good friend our good friend emerson i believe you know this fellow right here don't you what's his name uh oh who listen who to you who that who that <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah see <laughs> there we go <laughs> you want to try that Take again? me out of here okay <laughs> now do you know who this is you know good well who that is uh, of course that's bill yeah bill heinrich the seven yeah. level Ruth, Bill and I, we we do a radio show together, and Bill you know, also took my class. He took he took my yeah, my, took my training. Your yeah. class, you yeah. know, yeah, we took your class just so that you we could show you you had some class, brother. That's right. That's why we did it. I just and, gave it all away. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that was a wonderful class. But Bill Heinrich and I, we've been the. You know, we, we've done the show, the radio show together for several years, and we took a sabbatical after I had my heart attack. I said, I want to take some time off. He said, I understand. And we're pre-recording some seri- a series right now that we're going to be taking back out to the airways. We're on, got about 7 million downloads on that radio show, so we can't walk away and leave that. That'd be kind of dumb. But the point being with Bill, Bill talks about there's only two emotions in life. There's love and there's fear. Everything that is associated with fear is all physical mm-hmm. and it's very, very limited. And that's what drags us down. But with love and abundance, that's why we were actually created. And there is no limits to anything except within the canyons of our mind. Yeah. And what's interesting, one of the people that I like to listen to from time to time, I'm going to put the uh, link right there up. Thank you. The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale on YouTube. He does a beautiful job in explaining the way the brain works or the mind, as he calls it. He said, think of the mind being like a, a farmer's you know, field. It's the soil. And the, the, the earth does not care what the farmer plants. It'll just return 
what the farmer plants. If he plants corn, it's going to, re it's going to return corn. If he uh, plants a deadly poison, I think he called nightshade, <coughs> that's what it's going to return. And that's a good uh, analogy for us in our life. Whatever we sow in our life, we're going to reap. And, you know, for the, just like when you see someone come into a room and you kind of, you may not know them, but if they got a smile on their face, you're kind of like, you kind of think, well, they're kind of a, maybe a nice person, or whatever. And you make eye contact, you may smile back. But if they come in, they got a frown on their face, you're going, whoop, I don't want to look over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's a true reflection of who you are, what you, what you are, and where you're coming from. You know, and that, people. that domino was done at Emerson. Yep. Most people, the natural thing that we have always put opposite love is hate. Mm. But hate's not the opposite of love. Mm -mm. He's, Bill's right. Fear is. Mm -hmm. And it's it's fear. It's fear that, that causes hate. Oh, yeah. You hate what you fear. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you know, and this is so important. When you don't have, when, when you have love, you're operating in faith. Yes. And, and that's why hate is the opposite there. Mm -hmm. But it's fear that's at the core. Oh, yeah. It's fear that's at the core. And so when we're operating in a place of faith, of, of hope, Oh, why, by the way, we left we left off to, we left off one of the things about today, Jim is is when That's pigs okay. fly day. It yeah. was what day? When pigs fly. Oh, when pigs fly. Okay, yeah, right. you know everybody knows the knows the say. You know, ah, oh, yeah, well, that'll happen when pigs fly. Which, <laughs> but 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 the point of when pigs fly day is is having your sights set on something, and so many times people will be telling you it can't work or won't work or whatever. Oh, yeah. But, but it's it's the day where you say, you know what? Your dreams and your visions and your thoughts mm. have value. Yes. But back to what I was saying. When you're walking in faith, you are walking in love. You're walking mm -hmm. in light, if mm -hmm. you will. All yeah. of those are factors. And when we move out of faith or love mm -hmm. and get over into a place of fear, mm. that's when hate rises up. Yeah. And so... It's not whether it's love or hate. It really is love or fear. Yeah. And so, you know. It's in that negative world of fear. Armor. Yeah. He certainly is. And Bill walked away from his life. And it took him 30 years to create this book, The Seven Levels of Truth. And I was blessed and asked to endorse the, uh, give him a shout out there on the back. I'm not real good with cameras and stuff like that. But uh Anyway, you might see my name there, Jim Grant, TV producer, founder, all those good things. But point being, I was very honored because one day we were in Phoenix and Bill looked at me and he says, Jim, I'm going to do you a favor. I said, OK. And he handed me the original book. This is the second edition. He says, I want you to read this. He says, trust me, you need it. <laughs> When someone gives you a book, tells you, you need to read this. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, but by knowing Bill, I understood that he was trying to help me in areas where I didn't know I needed help. I mean, I'm an old Vietnam veteran. You know, I, I survived Vietnam. I survived Agent Orange. I'll survive uh, COVID. I'll, you know, <clears throat> yada, da, 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 you know, you know. But we all need help. Because we're all social creatures and everybody has the universal right to love and be loved. We really do. We really, truly do. And Emerson, I, I, I just, you know, looking back over your career and some of the things you've done, my goodness gracious, I just tip my hat to you because uh, you've done so many things. And the biggest, I mean, Emerson's done some big things, okay? He really has. He, and he won't, he's too humble to admit it. But the things that really bring him the joy is helping a small business. 
And that's what brings us joy is being able to reach, reach out to the regular people, just like me and you. We're just regular people. We're not. This one little gal from uh, India I was talking to, and she says, uh, she called me Mr. Grant. She Mr. Grant, she says, are you a celebrity? And I says, no, I can't even spell that word either. And she kind of like looked at me. <laughs> but I mean, just because, you know, they see us on, because we can be seen on anything from a cell phone to a big screen TV. But to me, I just enjoy what I do. I really, truly do. This is my calling. This is where I belong. And I really like it. And to be associated with, you know, like Emerson and Donna and Michaela and Charlene, my goodness gracious, Gaia, all the people we have on our team, my goodness gracious, it's just, I'm blessed, Emerson. I'm just super duper blessed. Well, and you know, to her, you were a celebrity. You know, sometimes this is challenging a lot of times, you know. Yeah. Um, there's an old saying, and, and, and people who viewed our show for, for a while have probably heard me say this before. But there's an old saying normally about relationships. Familiarity breeds contempt. Yes. I... I'm going to propose to you that the person that you are most familiar with in your life is yourself. Amen. And there is a 24-7, 365 message running in your head that, that, that sees and knows and, and, and reminds you of every shortcoming, every failure, every way that you're not enough, you're not as much as. Uh, and the example that I often will use is uh, somebody who really is very skillful at the piano. And so mm -hmm. picture yourself, picture yourself at a, at, a, at a party, or maybe it's a networking event, a beautiful party, and there's, a, and there's a piano there. And one of the guests who you don't know walks over to that piano, sits down and begins playing beautifully. Mm -hmm. Some piece of music. Maybe it's a recognizable piece. Maybe it's a jazz piece. Maybe it's classical. It just starts running along that keyboard. And people gather around that piano. And when, when she finishes, somebody makes the comment, oh, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. You just sat down without music or anything. I've always wished I could play piano like that. And you'll hear this response. I can't count the number of times I've heard this kind of response. Well, you know, if you'd had Miss Jones hitting your hand every time you hit a wrong note from the time you were seven years until the time you were 15, you'd be able to play just like me. And they totally dismiss that. I get you. I get you. They dismiss the way that the person mm -hmm. who was there was experiencing it. Mm-hmm. I get they you. miss the value and they don't see their own growth, mm -hmm. their own ability, their own position in the same yeah. light because they live with it 24-7, 365. Yeah. The voice is telling them, you know what, yeah. they didn't even hear how I missed five notes and that was just in the first minute. Mm -hmm. You know, well, they didn't yeah. even hear how flat that how flat that, uh, that that piano was. I was having to try to adjust the keys and I don't even know how I mm -hmm. got through it. <laughs> they don't hear any of these things. Mm -hmm. All they know is not good enough, not as much as, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you, you know, you don't know. And, and, and I know, see, I know, I know, I know, how, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we have to, we have to be willing to, we have to be willing to, to give that space for somebody else's appreciation in your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And hear them. Mm -hmm. This isn't yeah. about your ego. Yeah. This is absolutely not about your ego. This is about hearing from somebody else's perspective and mm -hmm. appreciating what you are, who you are, how you've touched their life, what you've accomplished, the value mm -hmm. you are, the difference you make. Mm -hmm. All of those things matter. We often don't see it because all we hear are the number of notes that we missed or how flat 
<laughs> how flat it was and how we struggled yeah. to get through it and how hard mm -hmm. it was. And yeah. Didn't they, didn't they hear all the mistakes or see all the mistakes? Now, Jim, mm -hmm. you've spoken from a lot of stages and I've spoken from a lot of stages mm -hmm. and there's never been a perfect talk. Oh, no, 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 you know? no, no. There's just no. never been a perfect talk. And the point mm -hmm. is perfection's paralysis. There is no perfection. Yes, you're correct. At, at the end of it, it's the end of it. And mm -hmm. you know what will happen? Tell me if this isn't true, Jim. No matter how screwy things get, and I've had some screwy things happen, I can tell you some. No matter how screwy things get, have you ever, ever, ever given a talk where you didn't have people coming up to you and just thanking you, and that was so powerful? And oh, so yeah. So much to them, and you nailed it on the head, and you did it. Yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. Always, always, always. Yeah. It's not about ego. Uh -uh. It's about recognizing the voices in fact i want to keep i want to keep going for another 30 seconds here you know <laughs> this is you know the scripture talks about the difference between the spirit soul and body right mm -hmm. spirit soul and body so in the concept of your spirit life who you are eternally your body we all know our body right and and your soul which is seated in your brain mm -hmm. okay how do you tell the difference between when the spirit's talking, when your body's talking, and when your soul is talking? Most people, it's all just kind of mushed up. I'm hungry. Okay. Well, I guess that's my body. I don't know. So I don't think, oh man, that's not that just doesn't feel right. I shouldn't do that. This how do you separate them? And I'm and I'm just gonna share this. Years and years ago, I uh, became very uh, interested in fasting and I and I built it up and then I we can do a whole show just on fasting and and how to do it in an easy way I'm not talking about this Wednesday we're not going to eat anything all oh, for from 6 a.m to 6 p.m and you're just about to die by the end of it you know by by the time I had kind of built up my my reserve in it I I I actually fasted um, the longest I fasted was 21 days wow so and, and going on and off of it became an easy thing. Mm -hmm. When you're on a fast like that, you have endless energy because your body is pulling from resources you already have. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have to tell you this. I love barbecue. You know I love barbecue. Oh, yes, sir. And I'll never forget. The, I was, I don't know, six or seven days into a fast at this point. And I'm driving past a barbecue place. Now everybody's everybody's driven past barbecue places, right? Smell that smoke, right? For those of you who aren't meat eaters, I get it. But you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Driving past, you smell this beautiful dish coming from it. And what happens? You start drooling like a hound dog at the at a picnic. What happens? Mm -hmm. What happens in mine? Man, mm -hmm. I could sure use some of that right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Are you hungry physically? Well, no, you might have just eaten two hours before. What are you hearing? You're hearing the differences there between your between your spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're starting to discern the differences in the, I'm going to call them voices, okay? Mm -hmm. The differences in those voices. And it is so eye-opening to recognize that your mind is over here. All of a sudden, your mind is wanting food, and you're not even hungry. Mm -hmm. Because your body's saying, hey, 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 I want some of that. And so all of these things are going on, like I said, 24-7, 365. Mm -hmm. And you know, Emerson, I'm glad you brought that up because the same thing can happen to us when we worry and we, we're, we've had a heart attack, we're scared, mm -hmm. um, we're thinking, you know, am I going to be okay? What if another one hits? You know, all of the fear factor, and that's going right along with what you're saying that's what i'm picking up that's mm -hmm. what came to my mind anyway and you know i deal with things we all deal with things our own way but i kind of deal with things you know just kind of matter of fact you know matter of fact kind of a guy you know if it if the wheels come off the car okay we're going to slide in the ditch okay so you know hang on you know but uh you know, we'll pick Wheels up the on the bus, we'll go, go across the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we didn't quite make the turn. <laughs> but my point being, 
there's a lot of people out there who are their own worst enemy when it comes to fear, when they're overcoming any type of uh, physical issues or, or problems. It can be very, very scary for them. A lot of the times, many cases, it's in the canyons of their mind what they're afraid of, but their physical body is okay. Mm -hmm. But their mind will convince them. What's fear stand for? Oh, yeah. False expectations that mm -hmm. appear real. Yeah, exactly. And to that, I would add one of my one of my core sayings, which uh, my wife doesn't like it when I say this. Just say it. It's G ready show now. <laughs> perception is reality. Your perception, your perception of events, of the That's world, right. of circumstances, and everything mm -hmm. else, just like Jim's perception. His cholesterol was good. His, his blood pressure was good. What's the big deal? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good here. That was his reality until yeah. <clears throat> the moment that Boom. he was sitting there with the doctor and the doctor said, you're going to the hospital now. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, they said, I've already admitted you to a hospital. It says over in College Station, you need to see a cardiologist. He says, you just had a heart attack. And I'm going like, I arrived. I, mean, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I always thought if you have a heart attack, you grab your chest, you're going to roll over, fall, oh, right. and you're kick and maybe huff and puff twice and pew, you're gone or something, you know. But <laughs> that was uh, like when we were expecting our first our first baby, when we went through Lamaze and everything else and all of this other stuff. And I mean, I was all prepared, but man, when, when the water broke, all of a sudden, I'm in, I'm in movie mode. I'm in movie mode. I'm in all these movies that you see on TV shows. We're in the car and I'm gunning the car. We're going to get my wife. And she, my wife's like, honey, 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 honey you're, you're having a baby. You're having a baby. And your wife is worried you're going to kill all three of them, all three of you on the I way to the hospital. I've been in labor 21 hours, Gene, Louise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we got about three minutes left, Emerson. And I'll tell you. <clears throat> The main thing we wanted to share with everyone is the fact that when you live in fear, you automatically enslave yourself. Oh, yeah. And that is the worst thing you can do because uh, it never solves a problem. All it does is destroy you on, further on the inside. And you shut uh, off it, your gifts from the world. Yes. And plus, it consumes a lot of the natural positive energy that you have in your body that can... Because your body is an amazing machine. It has a tremendous value as far as an ability to be able to you know, rejuvenate itself. Look at the liver, for example. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's an amazing organ right there. It really is. And, you know, to live in fear, um, just do yourself a favor. You can go. Let me put this up again. The Se Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale. One of the things that Mr. Nightingale says there, and I met him when I was about 18, right before I went in the Army, and I was old enough to know who he was, but too young and too dumb to appreciate who the man was. <laughs> but he talks in there that whatever you ask of the universe, it's already yours. You own it. And it took a while for me to get my mind around that, but it's so true. And also to Bill's book, uh, it's at True Life Purpose now, Mr. Bill Heinrich, this book right here. Uh, if you uh, contact Bill and tell him that uh, you heard it from here, he'll give you a discount on it. I don't know how much it is, but, you know, he'll he'll do that for you. And leave a review. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Give mm -hmm. him a review. Yeah, because Bill is just a, a, a fantastic guy. He will also give you a complimentary 30-minute consultation for free, and he will not add you to a... <laughs> to an email list or all that, trying to sell you this or that, because we just don't do that here. Everybody we're associated with here, um, you know, we just don't play that game. We don't have to, and we don't want to. So well, that's the main nobody's thing. nobody's offered us enough millions of dollars yet, you know. But um... Wow, would they offer that much? Yeah, will, will we take a check? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> we have fun here too, folks. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, our time is about gone. We got to get get out of here because another show is going to kick us off if we don't start stop. And uh, <clears throat> Emerson, thank you so much. I appreciate you, brother. And I'm going to be thinking about you on your trip. And you better give us a shout out on, while you're riding the rails there. You know, <laughs> you gotta you gotta dress the part. You know, a little bit. You know, get on a you know, 
an old shirt, maybe a cap or something, you know, and get you a stick with a knapsack on it, you know. You can do that. So, I mean, first time I saw you on stage, you were wearing a pirate's hat. <laughs> Third box car, midnight train, destination <laughs> banger, man. Oh, yeah, I tell you. Oh, worn out, worn suit out shoes. shoes. I don't, I don't pay, no, pay no union dues. <laughs> I tell you right now. Better lock it down, Jim. It's 55 after. I mean to tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. Be sure and love yourself first. Then you can love others. Make sure that you love yourself enough to give yourself grace and be good to yourself. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.